In this video, we're jumping on Middlesbrough's money trail, exploring how Borough have burned through over £100 million across the last 10 years. We'll delve into the three areas Borough have spent this colossal amount on over the decade, as well as how they've managed to fund this. Pretty brutal. We've analysed Middlesbrough's records over the last decade to unveil the story behind the numbers, focusing on three key metrics, revenue, profit and cash flow. We'll delve into the comprehensive impact of Premier League relegation and we'll also see how close Borough came to breaching PSR rules and how much they can afford to spend in 2024. So let's dive right in and begin with revenue. Borough's revenues peaked in 2017 with their sole Premier League season in this decade. With parachute payments firmly in the wind, 2023 saw Borough deliver 29 million, 6% up on the prior year, but over 90 million down on 2017. But this year's result put Middlesbrough ninth in the league, fourth out of those without parachute payment support. So what drove this trajectory? Let's dive into the revenue streams. Matchday revenues jumped to 9 million, up 37% and even surpassing their Premier League year. Attendance figures showed a resurgence at the Riverside, rising to 26,000 in 2023. Broadcasting revenues, however, fell to 10 million, despite Borough finishing three positions higher. This was due to Borough delivering 3 million in cut revenues the season before. And finally, commercial revenues. These also rose to 10 million, with the Unibet sponsorship and the Area kit deal the main drivers. So what does this mean for 2024? Attendance is slightly dipped, but with a run to the League Cup semi-finals and price increases, we forecast matchday revenues increasing to 9.5 million. In the league, Borough dropped four places in 2024, but an increase in underlying rights and cup money could see these flat at 10 million. And with Unibet and Araya still in place, we're forecasting another 10 million in commercial revenues. That would bring Borough 29.5 million at the top line, almost a million up on the year before. But how has this flowed to the bottom line? Now let's dive into profits. Borough have been in the red more years than not, with four consecutive years of losses, albeit improving in 2023 to 7 million. This however put Borough in the top half of the league, with many championship clubs suffering greater losses, including local rivals Sunderland. But how have Borough ended up here, and what does it mean for meeting profit and sustainability rules? Let's address this with our PL walkthrough. Let's set the timer, grey out the revenue, and dive into staff costs. Borough's wages predictably peaked in that Premier League campaign, but have since stabilised since 2020, standing at 30 million in 2023. However, as a percentage of revenues, staff costs alone have exceeded revenues in each of the last four years. Points in the Championship have typically cost half a million each in wages, but the price surges in the Premier League, Borough picking up their 28 points at over 2 million apiece. After factoring in staff costs, the divide between the divisions is clear. Next, operating costs. These have fluctuated throughout the decade, again peaking in the Prem, and 2023 seeing costs rise to 14 million. Greater detail in this area is sparse, but at EBITDA level, we already see Borough in the red 70% of the time. Third, stadium and facilities. These are largely consistent, steadily increasing to 3 million. Finally, we come on to transfer fees. Borough steadily invested in the playing squad until their Premier League relegation, where costs and profits have swung wildly. Middlesbrough have continued to consistently add new faces to the playing squad, but 2019 saw profits with the sales of Adama Traore and Ben Gibson, and 2023 saw the first profit in four years from cashing in on Jed Spence and Marcus Tavernier. Those transfer profits in 2023 have improved the bottom line, but it is still four consecutive years of losses for Middlesbrough. What does this mean for financial fair play? Assuming owner funding meets league conditions, over three years in the championship, Middlesbrough are allowed to lose 39 million. Starting with operating profit, we add in the club's finance costs to get losses before tax. The club are then allowed to exclude certain costs, such as youth and community development, as well as adjustments for COVID loss of income. These aren't disclosed, so we are in the realm of estimates. We're assuming 7 million of allowable costs per year and all COVID items net to zero. 
Add those back in, and that gives Borough total PSR losses of 36 million. A little bit of breathing room from the maximum threshold. But what about 2024? With 2021's heavy loss now out of assessment, the picture is brighter for Borough. The club are able to absorb a further £27 million loss in 2024. With that forecasted revenue increase, as well as the big ticket sales of Tuba Akpom and Morgan Rogers, Borough should be safe from PSR crosshairs for now. So now we've broken things down, how do we get to that 100 million of cash out the door? Middlesbrough themselves don't provide a cash flow, but we are able to piece one together with estimates and figures from their parent company. See the video description for further details. Firstly, looking at cash from operations, which are driven by the EBIT dial line items we looked at earlier, these reflect the profit picture. Cash has steadily flown out of the Riverside in eight years out of 10. In total, 57.5 million spent over the decade. Next, back to transfer fees. Again, it's more years with cash going out of the door than coming in. Over 10 years, that's a further 31 million leaving the bank account. Finally, there's spend on stadium and facilities. Overall smaller, but that's still another 14 million of cash spent. Add those three together and it's 102 million of cash burned through by Borough over these 10 years. So how much funding has been required? Cash injections have been constant and by 2023, the funding over these 10 years had reached just over 100 million. This was largely through loans from the Gibson O'Neill Group, with Borough now owing almost 150 million to their parent company, as well as 7 million in bank loans. So as we mentioned earlier, whilst Borough's results don't look great in isolation, they're in fact performing well compared to the rest of the championship. If you want to see how they stack up against fierce rival Sunderland, you can check out this video here. And with that, we're out.